This is day 120, episode 30 of my modular journey. And this is the conclusion episode to my modular journey, season one. I decided to call it season one because this is a never ending journey. It's going to probably continue into 2022 as well. So why not wrap up these 30 episodes into a nice little package? My modular journey started in July of 2021 with the purchase of the first module here, and that was plates. Plates and Pamela's as a clock. I spent the first week or so making some generative type music with just plates, strings, and monsoon. Uh, And it sounded pretty good. I was pretty happy with the fact that I spent uh, only around $1,500 and was able to generate music. Uh, Although the tool I used was the um, Roland System 8, I did use its sequencer, so it really wasn't quite random. So out of everything you see here, the only impulse buy of the entire rack, including stuff down here, was Ornament and Crime. Everything else was on a list. I shamefully admit I have an Excel spreadsheet that had everything on it (laughs) that I was going to buy. Things were were not available for a long time. Like a couple of things I couldn't find at all, like uh, like Modbox and Ultra Random Analog, I couldn't find anywhere. Uh, even even the Chaos Devices things couldn't be found for a while. So, as things started to become available and they were on my list, I purchased them uh, because I could. And that's the the main the main excuse is because I could. They were already planned, so why not just buy them? So I am about a year ahead of schedule (laughs) of everything that I was going to buy, but that's okay because everything's being used right now and, uh, and I'm having the most fun I've had making music probably in decades, honestly. I mean, I own a lot of outboard synthesizer gear in the studio and I play with them a lot as well, but nothing like this. This is from the moment I wake up until the moment I go to sleep kind of thing. Because this has become my radio station as well, by the way. This is, I, I, I patch something up in the morning or the night before, and in the morning I flip it on and it becomes the music that I listen to all day while I'm working. So it's serving its purpose. It's doing everything that I was planning to do. And I'm still at the, I mean, if there's this much to learn, I'm still right here. I have so much further to go. And so that's what this conclusion episode is really about, is how far I got and how much further there is to go. So first thing I want to talk about, really, is the footprint. I I went from the reasonable 84 HP to an unreasonable 168 HP times 4. I have these two rows filled, and there's two more rows above here that I haven't uh, put in the rack yet. So I'll have 12 U eventually, uh, the other two, or, or the other six U up here will be for uh, for the 2022 season <laughs> of, of my modular journey. Although I will say, I, I want to put a footnote in here, that I'm not as, as rambunctious to buy things as I was uh, in 2021, because again, everything was brand new to me. So it was pretty easy to pick things because everything sounded great. Now that I know what these things all do, I'm a lot more particular about what I want. I want something that's going to make beautiful noises, like the ensemble makes beautiful noises. Uh, I see a lot of people have more than one plates because it also makes beautiful noises. And uh, and my favorites, though, are still the chainsaws because the, with the, the detuned saws, it sounds fantastic. So uh, just just love everything that I have. Uh, So it was a good choice. I I continue to pat myself on the back for making good choices. But I want to say that these choices that you see here are not things I pulled out of thin air. They come from various uh, heroes of modular. It comes from their patch notes or their mention of what they use to make uh, make a certain patch. Even if I couldn't pick out what a Batumi did, you know, for instance, in a in somebody else's video, the fact that they mention it and that they use the 12 channels of LFOs here to control everything, it it just piqued my interest and I went and looked into it and did a ton of research on it and then bought one. So that's that's how it it went all year. I want to talk about the lessons learned here for me because everything was a new experience. Everything was a lesson learned, but the, the key things that I want to talk about What I started my journey with was know your destination. That was, to me, the most important thing. 
but know where you want to go, know what, what kind of music you want to make, and then work towards that. So I did do that. However, what I did, what I think I did wrong, maybe, was uh, too much too quick. Again, because it was a, a frenzied purchasing thing in the first 45 days, I bought so much stuff because I, things kept going out of stock. And so when something that I wanted on my list that you know became available, I would purchase it and then it would I'd stick it in the rack and then I would not really learn it as well as I should. I didn't I didn't really learn like I didn't deep dive Belgrade before I did my video on Belgrade, for instance. Uh, and a lot of these, I mean, there's there's 13 different pieces of software in Ornament and Crime. There's 80 some softwares in Disting. Where's Disting? He's right here. <laughs> so there is so much uh, that these things do that I did not learn because too much new stuff kept coming in and I kept throwing it in the rack or trying to whip out these videos as quick as I could so I could move on to the music part of it. So uh, that segues into my next lesson learned. And that is do not waste months of time making YouTube videos when you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I did not know what I was talking about, yet I did this journey because it was kind of meant to be a diary. Like, hey, I bought this module and I'm putting it in the board and now I'm fiddling with it. Uh, it was really just for me. The whole journey video series was really just for me to document what I was doing. But it wound up on YouTube because some people said it was cool. As I said in every video, I'm not there to really teach anybody anything, but if you got anything out of them, that's great because what you really saw in this modular journey series was a complete newbie not having any idea what he was doing and turning a knob and something happening and getting excited. That was the whole point of, of this series. So maybe it was a mission accomplished, but at the same time, I wasted a lot of time. I should have been I should have been learning more and not worrying about videos as much, which is interesting because I'm making a video right now. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently I haven't learned that lesson really yet. <clears throat> All right. Another, another two, two quick lessons learned only because they're, they're both they're related to modulation sources and they were mind blowers for me because I did not understand modulation sources the way modular uh, can, can implement them. And one of them was uh, about uh, regulating LFOs, for instance. You want to regulate the amount of LFO to use because otherwise you'd, you'd have some, some kind of thing sweeping like this guy up here. See this sign? Sweeping top to bottom. Full, full voltage, top to bottom. Whereas one in here in the middle is sweeping only a little bit. See, if I raise the, uh, the attenuator here, it goes up and down. If I lower it, it's a it's a smaller amount of voltage being being seeped through. So to, that was a that was a eureka moment really for me because I I didn't even realize that that was a thing, and I wound up using things like veils. Veils comes in pretty handy for that for a VCA or mixer. Uh, it really does uh, help me wrangle my my modulation sources pretty well. You know, feed the signal in here, feed it out here, and then control it with the voltage here. Oops, my hands in the way control it with the amount of voltage you want to send through here. That was a eureka moment. And then the mind blower was uh, also about modulation sources. And that is the fact that you can use anything in the rack, anything that puts out a voltage can be a modulation source. So taking the audio out of plates and feeding it into the span of Belgrade and setting the attenuators uh, it, you can actually use the pitches coming out of audio because all pitches are is voltage. And it was just one of those mind-blowing moments. I, I know it seems like like easy peasy for the rest of you, but for me, it was uh, kind of shocking to learn that. I mean, because what that really did is it kind of blew the lid off of modular for me. It made me, that was that moment where I was like, oh, <laughs> now I get it. Those are the experiments I've been performing the last few weeks is trying to see what different audio sources plugged into a modulation jack can do to, to different sounds. And it's, it's been crazy. I mean, it makes things unlistenable, but at the same time, it's, it's pretty amazing that it even does that. Uh, the things that I already knew were, of course, that there's endless hours of content on the internet and, and YouTube. Uh, there's still something I learn every single day. 
it's, it's a never, you're never going to run out of things to learn. I, I can promise you that because there's always somebody else that does something different. And then you want to, you run over to your rack and try it, you know, like, like doing signal paths a different way, instead of going the, the standard way that you see on every, every flow chart, uh, mix it up, send things through different sources first, like sh send a, send an oscillator through a delay first, like Pico, send it, send the sound through delay and then into a filter instead of, I mean, you always think of effects at the very end, right? All of my videos said, yeah, end of chain, end of chain. But whoever thought to put a, to put an oscillator output into a delay first, so you double it first, and then you send it through your filtering and, and VCA. Watch what everybody else does and take a piece of everything that everybody does and try it out. That is the big advice. My closing statement is that I was hoping that modular was not going to be one of those, oh, let me try it and I'll get bored in two weeks and then I'll, I'll sell my plates. Um, it did not turn out that way at all. It wound up being the exact opposite. It was so cool that it spun off into a crazed obsession that literally if I'm not working or feeding myself or sleeping, I'm doing something. And even when I'm sleeping, sometimes I'm still doing something in my brain. I have spent more hours on modular than I think I have all of my synthesizers for the last 10 years combined. And I'm not exaggerating even in just these four months. Because, you know, synthesizers, I turn them on, I use presets or I try something new, tweak a, tweak a setting, save it, and then I'm done. And it, it gets shut off. But this has literally not shut off for four months. It has, has been an absolute pleasure to work with. It's, it's, it's brilliant. And I'm really grateful to have finally given it a chance because I know I had my nose turned up at Modular for a long time. But now I get it. And I'm in, I'm invested, and I plan to take it all the way. Uh, I don't know what's coming up next, um, maybe for 2022. Uh, I do have a couple of pieces I do want to have. I do want the Rene uh, sequencer. And uh, I, I do have already the Talon and the Oct that are here in the rack that I have not done episodes for yet because I'm just going to save them for season two. So I'll probably do those and the Rene uh, as the first three episodes of, of my next Modular Journey series. But the things that I want to do next will be, um, I want to set up some live stream, random patches, uh, a patch from scratch, uh, sonic experiments. Uh, these are some of the, some of the ideas that, uh, that I've been gathering. And, uh, and that is probably what's going to happen in 2022 for me is I'm just going to start pushing a little bit more sound out there and a lot less talking. So look forward to not hearing my voice in 2022. And I guess with that in mind, that wraps up episode 30, my conclusion episode to season one of my modular journey. We will see you next year.